The story starts with this girl, whose name is Prauma, supporting the guy she likes so much while he is playing football. He is Chalanthern, but we better call him Lan. Everything is going well. He is playing the match and Mook supports him in a somewhat exaggerated way. At the moment when Lan scores a goal, he looks towards the audience to smile at someone. Mook thinks it is her and gets super excited, but the reality is that he was looking at this other girl. Moon has a flashback where she is in a wifely outfit with Lan, and Lan's parents told him that his fire element was weak, which makes him prone to illness, so he should marry a woman born on the 15th day of the 4th crescent moon. That's Mook. Their elements would be strengthened if they are together. Then to get Lan's attention, she takes this megaphone to shout that she loves him. Which makes Lan lose focus and fall down. Angry, he asks her to stop being so annoying and tells her that no one would love her. He also tells her that even if she was the only girl in the world, he wouldn't love her. Yes, I think he went a bit too far. But anyway, from there we go a few years ahead. This girl here is Mook, who grew up, and now she's a DJ. A lot of people arrive in a car. I imagine this is kinda like Tomorrowland. In this bumblebee-like car are these two guys, who start to enjoy the music. Yeah right, the music, because one of them is stunned by Mook's beauty. He couldn't take his eyes off her for a second. So once Mook finishes her presentation, he gets out of the car quickly to look for her, not knowing he was being watched. When he gets to Mook, in the most hurried way possible he tells her that he likes her. Mook tells him the obvious, that it's too soon for him to say that since they barely know each other, to which he replies that they have all night to get to know each other and starts to approach her to kiss her. But she stops him and starts screaming for help saying that he was a pervert. The boy's friend shows up to take him away quickly while Mook's friend, whose name is Oak, calls security to chase the stalker. Meanwhile, the guys run away from security, and the person who was spying on them a few moments ago gets on the move. The subjects flee all over the city, until they manage to hide from the pursuers. The stalker, angry, says that if he sees Mook again, he will make her pay. His friend, whose name is Maru tasks him if he has anything to do with that DJ, to which he answers no. Moments later, as if it were a robot, Maru manages to devise a plan to escape. They must separate, he will distract the pursuers, and then meet at the hotel. Taking the opportunity that Marut believed, the stalker begins to move, but he was being pursued, he was the target, meanwhile, Mook walked with Oak, and well, let's stop with the mysteries, the stalker is nothing more, and nothing less than Lan, and Mook knows that, although she tells herself that she must forget about him, Marut keeps running away from the security, until he reaches the crowd where Oak is, and in order not to be discovered, he crouches down in front of him to untie him, and then tie his shoes again, once more using his robot powers to know that he is safe. As for Oak, he misunderstood the situation, and was delighted. We return to Lan, who meets his pursuer, and they begin to fight in a very aggressive way. Lan tries to run away but is caught. Then he manages to take the advantage, and tries to discover the identity of the pursuer, but to no avail because moments later, he pulls out a gun. Fortunately Lan reacts quickly, and they begin to struggle. Lan manages to escape, but the pursuer manages to graze his arm with a shot. But the chase doesn't end, because Lan keeps running away until he is rescued by Mook, who takes him to an alley and realizes that he is bleeding. So in order not to be discovered, she gives him one of her clothes and pretends to kiss him, and then remembers that she has always helped Lan when he needed it but he only asked her to stop bothering him. The pursuer passes by. Mook's plan had worked. Lan was only speechless to see that the DJ that he liked so much almost kissed him and now takes him by the arm. Lan's wound is not deep, but when Mook is about to leave, Lan reproaches her that this attack has been caused by her. Mook tells him that it is not like that, then Lan believes her, but now he mentions that she caused this whole situation because she likes him. Mook tells him to stop thinking about nonsense and instead be grateful to her, Lan keeps flirting with her. It should be noted that he has no idea that she is Mook, the girl he despised so much. After a kick in his parts, Mook tells Lan to stop being a pervert, and then she leaves. Meanwhile, the persecutor, or rather, the worst murderer in the world, is angry because his prey managed to escape. Marut meets Lan again and asks him what happened, he tells him that he has been shot in the arm. But nothing happens, the wound is not deep. 
Mook watched from a distance, because although it is quite obvious, she still has feelings for Lan. Later, she meets Oak again, and he notices that her clothes are full of blood. Although she clarifies that it is not her blood. Then she explains almost the whole situation to Oak, and he scolds her for acting so recklessly. And even more when she told Oak that she did not like this man. Oak mentions that there may be something else behind all this, and Mook tells him that she knows that boy. She is sure it is Lan. Even though he doesn't recognize her, she tells Oak that she has held a grudge against Lan for what happened, and that it is bad luck that they have met again. But I think the reality is different. Oak asks Mook if she still loves Lan. There she remembers another occasion where Lan told her that he didn't love her, and that he didn't want to have her in his life. Mook makes a fuss because she has done everything for Lan, and ends up telling him that she will leave his life forever. Back with Marut and Lan, Lan asks him if he saw the chaser's face, Land insists that this is the work of the DJ, but Morat mentions that this is not the case, as if it was, they would just beat him up. So he tells Land that this must be the work of someone else, but Land can't think of anyone else, so it's like he has an invisible enemy, but he won't stand idle by, as he will catch them next time. Mook is at home, cooking while stalking Lan, proving once again that she still has feelings for him. Then she gets a call from her father, Puffy, he asks her when she will be back home, as he needs help with some company matters, but Mook tells him that she will work as a DJ for a couple of years before returning. Her father asks her to delay her studies for a year because something urgent came up at the company, and he needs immediate help, but Mook insists that she does not want to miss out on the unique opportunity to be a DJ. Puffy is quite worried, and the situation will only get worse. Next, Mook goes shopping with Oak while Marut and Lan meet to try to find out who was the person who shot him. Lan wants to confirm the suspicions that this DJ is responsible, and is sure that when she sees him, she will act strangely. Mook and Oak enter a jewelry shop just down the street from Lan and Marut, but suddenly, Mook receives an urgent call from her mother, Da, who asks her to return to Thailand immediately, so she rushes. Lan's suspicions increase when he sees from above how Mook and Oak run out of the jewelry shop, so he tries to chase her, but Mook gets lost in the crowd. Mook and Oak arrive at the hospital, where Mook's mother and her sister, Petch, are. The reason for all this is that Pethai suffered an accident. Mook tries to calm Petch down by telling her that everything will be fine. Then the doctor comes out to tell them that although they have stopped the bleeding, it is possible that he will not recover. In the worst case scenario, Mook's father will end up brain dead. They go in to see the father, Mook tells him that she will do everything possible to make him recover, and asks him not to leave them. Meanwhile, Lan and Marut go to the place where Mook usually goes to rule out suspects. They quickly realize that the guards there have no weapons, so the person who shot Lan is not one of them. Lan knows that one day he is going to meet that DJ again. From there we go to DA's house. They are all devastated by the situation, and don't know what to do. But things get even worse, because the maid, Ting, appears worried telling them that there is something they must see, and that is that they have a court order against them. Soon they will be evicted from the house. Immediately, Mook calls a lawyer. Later, he mentions that this house is part of the guarantee of a loan. Pefai has a debt of 100 million baht. That's more or less 3 million dollars. This debt is because things at the company have not been going so well, so Mook's father had to take a loan from the bank and use the house as collateral, but things went wrong. Pethai sold the company before he was hospitalized, but that was not enough to pay off the debts, that's when Mook remembers the phone call she received earlier from her father, and feels guilty for not helping him. The lawyer tells them that they still have a chance if they sell the things in the house, this to have three months more. Petch refuses to accept the situation. Meanwhile, Lan returns to his parents' house in Bangkok, where he is not very well received by his father, Lim Pichet. Lan's mother intervenes to stop his father from scolding him, her name is Siddhafat. Then these two people arrive, she is Lan's sister, Lak, and this is her husband, Denai. Lak, like her father, scolds Lan and tells him he is useless. Lan's father wants him to inherit his company, that's why he insists so much that he must be perfect. Lan's mother approaches him and notices that he has a fever. And when she touches his arm he writhes in pain but says it's nothing, only to collapse moments later on his way up the stairs, back to Mook's house. She is packing up all the things to sell, 
then calls Oak to make a reservation. From there we go to see Marut, who asks his assistant, Poom, to investigate as much as he can about the DJ. Poom thinks that Marut is romantically interested in her, but he clarifies that he is not. Then we see Petch, who despite the whole situation, is playing video games, but still feels bad for her father. Someone in the game asks Petch if she will go to the Mars video game launch event, but she replies that she can't attend because of a family matter. Then Mook enters Petch's room to tell her once again to pack up all the unnecessary items, but she just ignores her, so Mook asks the maid to pick everything up. Petch refuses to sell her belongings, as they are collector's items, and she had a hard time getting them. Mook tells her that she will be able to get those items back after resolving this situation, but Petch maintains her stance and does not want to sell her belongings, and tells Mook that if they must sell everything, then she will also have to sell DJ's things, which Mook refuses because she can make money with those gadgets, unlike Petch's belongings. Petch runs away from home crying. Meanwhile, Mook visits her room, where she has many things that her father gave her, most of them related to being a DJ. They are very valuable memories and gadgets for her. But after thinking about what happened with Petch a few moments ago, she asks Ting to help her to collect everything as she also thinks about selling these things to not be selfish. Ting tries to make Mook see reason and asks her not to be impulsive. Then she tells her to give Petch time, as she will help the family sooner or later. Lan's parents talk to Marut, who tells them what happened. When they realize that Lan was shot, they begin to reproach Marut for not having taken good care of Lan. Lan's father regrets that everything happened in another country, because if it had happened in Thailand, he himself would have caught the person responsible for what happened. After that we see a flashback of Lan when he was young, he used to get sick a lot, worrying both his parents and Lak. Lak and Anai leave the emergency room, where she starts to say that Lan is an impulsive man incapable of taking over the company. Denai tells her that if he is not like that, it is because she is an intelligent woman. Back with Lan's parents, they don't want their son to get seriously ill again, so they remember something they did a few years ago. Remember the compatible elements. Well, they set up a kind of fake wedding where Mook and Lan would get married so that their elements would complement each other and Lan could heal. Mook accepted without thinking much about it. After thinking about this, Lan's father comes up with a great idea to use the same formula of the elements again, but as Mook is not there, they will use a photo that Lan's mother had saved. In this photo Lan and Mook are together, then they start praying for Lan to recover. Patch after leaving home, went to Mars presentation, where Marut happened to be, and we'll see why. Then Marut uses his weird powers again to save Patch. She immediately recognizes Marut. As he is a famous video game developer she admires, Marut scolds Patch for being reckless. This makes her make a fuss and start crying, making everyone around her think that Marut hurt her. Poom shows up to calm the situation, making everyone leave. Then he asks Marut if he hurt that girl. Marut asks Boom to do anything to stop Patch from crying. Then Poom asks Marut to hold that special edition figure and sign it while he takes care of Patch. But Petch stops crying when she sees the limited edition figure and wants to have it, so she tells Marut that she has admired him for a long time. Marut agrees to give her the figure, to which Petch also takes the opportunity to ask for an autograph. After that he leaves, but not before smiling. Petch ended up quite happy. In the hospital, we see that the murderer enters the room where Lan is to inject him with some poison. But before he can do so, he manages to wake up and stop him. But when he is conscious, he realizes that only his parents are there. But was it all a dream? No, the killer was there. But they struggled and Lan ended up unconscious from a blow. But before the killer could act, Lan's parents appeared and he had no choice but to flee. Seeing Lan awake, his parents tell him that they put up Mook's picture so that he would get better. But Lan tells them that his fever got better thanks to the doctors. Then Lan's father asks him about the person who shot him and get ready, because who is behind all this is Lak. She hired the assassin to get rid of Lan so that she could be in charge of the company, but seeing that he has failed twice, she gives him one last chance. Denai doesn't know what is going on, and she hides it very well. Although she can't hide her frustration that her father doesn't consider her a worthy heir. Lak goes to the living room where Lan is, she hears them arguing. 
Lan does not want to take over the company, but his father insists. Lan tells him that he should leave the company to Lak, but Lak replies that Lak cannot inherit the company as she acquired someone else's surname when she got married. Hearing all this, Lak intervenes angrily. As her father practically denied her as a daughter, her mother tries to calm the situation. Lak and Lan argue. Lan tells her that if she wants the company so badly, she should have it, since he doesn't want it. Denai intervenes to tell them both that their father loves them. Then Lak casually asks Lan what she intends to do with the person who shot her. Then we see that Mook continues to post on Instagram the products he will be selling, announcing that she will also do a live broadcast. Meanwhile, Lan's parents were discussing about their son's situation. Moments later, Siddhafat hears about what happened with Pethai and tells her husband about it. As for Marut, he is thinking about what happened with Patch earlier until Poom arrives to admire his pecs and to tell him that he has found a way to contact Mook. Since he has been stalking her on Instagram, Poom believes that Marut is romantically interested in Mook. Still at the Mars presentation, Patch finds an empty place at the front and sits down. Moments later, the presentation of the game begins, given by Marut himself, who mentions that one person will be able to try the game that same day, and yes, Patch ends up being the chosen one. Patch starts to try the game, which is in virtual reality. Her character almost dies inside the game, but is saved at the last moment by Marut. After that, Marut leaves because he has a special date, he will meet this woman. Patch was following him to talk to him, but is a bit disappointed to see that Marut was dating someone. Poom appears to tell her that she better admire Marut from afar. Siddhafat and Limpichet go to visit Dai at the hospital who was seeing Pathai, they both offer help, and Da tells them that everything is under control. Later, we go back to Lan, who remembers what happened with Mook, and calls Marut to ask for a way to contact Mook. This because he wants to talk to her about the shooter, and the attack he suffered at the hospital. Lan is sure that Mook is the main suspect in all this. Moments later, he enters her Instagram feed to tell her that he has to talk to her. The situation was awkward. Lan was threatening to ruin her sales, but Mook responds by exposing Lan and blocking him. Pitch leaves the presentation and looks at Mook's live performance, only to feel guilty about how she had acted, so she returns home, where Mook was waiting for her. She reproaches her for buying figures again, but Patch clarifies that it was a gift. However, far from being upset, Mook acts quite warm towards Patch, and all was well until they realize that there is a gecko on the table. Next, we see Lan and Marut go out to see Mook. They both upload a photo on Instagram for Lan's parents to see, and realize that he doesn't want to inherit the company. But far from understanding this, they think Lan has problems that only an old horoscope expert can understand, so they go to see him. Mook makes her show, and ends it the same way she always does, then is told that someone wants to talk to her. Although she refuses, he takes action, even though Marut had earlier told him that he doesn't think she's connected to the problems, and that Lan is actually interested in Mook, and the more he is rejected by her, the more he wants her. Lan's plan is to get her drunk and get the truth out of her. For this he will pay her. While Marut will stay to see that there is nothing suspicious, Mook tells him that she will answer all his questions, but then they will go their separate ways. Mook finishes drinking and takes the money, and then leaves. But Lan tells her that they haven't talked yet, but she doesn't stop. Lan offers her more money, and Mook accepts immediately and gives him only two minutes to talk. Mook tells him that what happened the day of the shooting was just a coincidence, and to stop bothering her. But moments later, the killer has Lan in his sights, and Mook realizes this and pushes him in order to save his life. Lan's parents go to see the old man, who tells them that Lan is in grave danger. But what can save him is to be with a woman born on the 15th day of the 4th crescent moon. Back in action, Marut realizes the danger and looks for possible places where the sniper might be, then goes upstairs to try to catch him. But the killer comes down the next staircase and ends up escaping. Lan didn't notice anything and thinks that Mook just wanted to hug him. When she was about to leave, he notices that Mook has a wound, so he cleans it. This brings back memories to Mook. As something similar happened before, Mook continues on her way while Marut continues analyzing the situation. He tries to look for clues, and only gets cigarette ash. He recognizes that the murderer is intelligent. Later, 
Mook tells Oak what happened, but clarifies that she didn't say anything to Lan because she wasn't sure of what she had seen. Maruk doesn't say anything either. He only tells Lan to be careful, and offers to accompany him whenever he goes out. Suddenly, Denai arrives in a suspicious way and interrupts the conversation. He says that he was late because his meeting ran long. Lan tells him that his father shouldn't force him to take Denai's place, to which he replies that a son is more important than a son-in-law. Back home, Mook smiles thinking about what happened and finds it hard to admit that she is still interested in Lan, and talking about the King of Rome. His parents go to Mook's house to offer them help so that they can stay in that house. When Mook leaves her room, Lan's parents are impressed with her beauty. They almost didn't recognize her. Moments later, Mook rejects the offer. But it doesn't end there. Because thanks to what the old man from the horoscope told them, Lan's parents want him and Mook to get married. Siddhafat mentions that she has already talked about this with Lan. But the reality is that Lan flatly refuses. In spite of that, his parents insist. Mook rejects the marriage and says that she and her mother want to overcome this situation alone. Siddhafat accepts Mook's decision, but makes it clear that if she changes her mind, she should just tell her. As for Lan, he still doesn't know that Mook is the DJ, and as he remembers how annoying Mook was in the past, he thinks that she is still the same now. Things at Mook's house are going well. She is live streaming, and her mother makes sweets to sell. Mook also continues as a DJ. Later, Ting notices that Dai is trying too hard. The next morning, Mook confronts Petch because she is not helping at all. But Petch mentions that her mother does not need help because she is with Ting. Mook clarifies that she should not stay in bed as if she does not have any worries. All this leads to the inevitable. Dar ends up fainting from working too hard, causing everyone to worry. But don't worry, because moments later she manages to wake up. Mook tells her that she can't let her work too hard and faint again, and asks her to take care of herself, because if anything happens to her, Mook doesn't know if she could continue. Later, Mook goes to visit Pethai and receives the amount she must pay. On her credit card she doesn't have enough money, so she says she'll pay cash. Then she gets a call from the lawyer. Then they meet, and he tells her that the bank agreed to compounding Mook's debt, the whole situation starts to get on top of her, getting to a point where she doesn't know what to do. After that, she goes to give another presentation, and Lan goes to see her again. After Mook finishes her show, Lan follows her into a corner. Mook tries to punch him in the crotch, but he was expecting it. Moments later, Lan reveals that he already knows that she is Mook. And not only that, he is also aware of Pethai's situation. Lan mentions that at first, she already looked familiar to him when they met. Lan thinks Mook's plan was to lure him in and get his attention, arrange the shooting to be a heroine and impress him, and then play hard to get so he'd want her and finally brainwash his parents into arranging the wedding, so Mook would end up getting money to pay off the debts. Mook mentions that she would never come up with such a crazy idea, but after Lan talks to her in a rather nasty way, Mook gets angry and agrees with him, mentioning that she actually did plan the whole thing to pay off her debt, and it worked, since Lan was interested in her. They both start talking about how much they discussed each other, and then Mook mentions that since Lan disgusts her, she will agree to marry him. The more Lan wants Mook out of her life, the more she wants to marry him. Lan makes it clear that he will never love her, then turns around and asks Mook if she is doing all this because she still loves him, after getting close to the point of almost kissing, Mook assaults Lan and tells him that she will make him fall in love with her, so he should get ready to marry her. At home, Mook thinks about what happened and takes out the ring from the fake wedding she had with Lan in the past, and we see a bit of a sour memory. She thought Lan would sing a song for her, but in reality it was for this girl called Nutch, to whom he ended up declaring his love. Nutch asks him if he has nothing to do with Mook, since she had proposed to him at the football match, Lan tells her that Mook loves him, but he doesn't love her. Although at first Nutch seems to say things that favor Mook, the reality is that she then ends up saying some pretty nasty things about her physique. As she didn't know Mook was there, Mook overheard the whole conversation and got angry, throwing a drink over her and causing a fuss. Lan intervenes to get Mook to leave, but Nutch tells him that if he still gets on with Mook, then he shouldn't bother seeing her again. Nutch leaves and Lan tries to follow her, but Mook gets in the way. 
Lan told her that he made her come here so that she would realize that he didn't love her. It was after this event that both of them took distance, and Mook ended up keeping that ring for all this time until now. Mook wants revenge, he wants to hurt Lan like he did with her. The next morning, Lan has a somewhat erotic dream with Mook, and he can't resist. But before it goes any further, he wakes up. Moments later, his mother enters the room to tell him that he has a guest waiting for him. While this is happening, Petch goes to Mars' premises again to have fun, looking at the figures made by Marut, who then appears to take her away because he's afraid she will break them. Petch wants to take the opportunity to give Marut his shirt button, which he had lost the first time they met, but she can't find it anywhere. Back with Lan, he asks who the guest is, only to realize moments later that it is none other than Mook. Lan is quite angry. Mook is there as her mother asked her to bring some things to Sidifat's house, but Mook will not waste the opportunity she has, as firstly, she accepts help from Lan's parents for the debt payments, but there is one more thing, and that is that Mook finally agrees to marry Lan. Lan turns away in anger, while his parents were very happy as they believe it is the best thing for him. Mook says that if she is able to end Lan's bad luck, she will gladly help him. Lan refuses to get married, as he believes that a marriage should not be carried out by mere superstitions, he does not want this to be the reason for his marriage. Mook begins to act so that Lan's parents pressure him to convince him. They ask Lan to be civil, but he says he would rather die than marry Mook, and then leaves.